the Xiaomi 13T. It came out less than a month ago and I've been super super excited to test it out. So we are going to be taking a look at the camera, the performance and everything in between and we will see if this phone is worth the hype. I have so much to talk about so let's get right into it. Alright, so starting off with the build quality, I think that this phone looks absolutely gorgeous with its blue uh, vegan leather back and also unfortunately it's a plastic frame so that's a little bit disappointing but considering its uh, price point at around uh, five six hundred dollars i think that's totally acceptable we also have a gorilla glass 5 and dual speakers on the bottom and on the top unfortunately no headphone jack here but hey that's kind of the standard right now and we can't really do anything about that the phone is ip68 water and dust resistant but i'll still advise you to slap on this case because we gotta protect that back some how right the inbuilt fingerprint scanner works fine for the most part i mean it's not one of the fastest but in my opinion it uh, gets the job done but i should mention that it's using an older technology so there's that talking about this gorgeous display it's a 6.67 inch amulet uh, display with a maximum refresh rate of 144 hz and uh, hdr10 plus support as well which is always good to see here and the best feature of this display is its brightness which can actually reach 2600 nits under the sunlight which is damn bloody impressive if you ask me just like any other normal Xiaomi phone, this one also runs on the latest Android 13 with MIUI 14 slapped on top of that and Xiaomi also promises 4 years of Android updates, so we're gonna see about that. There is also this uh, cool heart rate monitor that's using the inbuilt fingerprint scanner. Now I don't know how accurate that is, but hey, it's there. Now when it comes to the display quality, as you can see here from this sample, it actually has super vivid bright colors and I absolutely love that. It's one of the best displays, I probably on par with uh, Samsung ones and I really love that, especially because the resolution is also a little bit above Full HD at uh, 1220 by 2712 pixels and 446 ppi density for all of you nerds out there. You know, and all of this is packed with Adobe Vision which makes the experience even better and I really enjoy watching any type of content on this device. And here is how the dual speakers sound like. And so moving on to the performance of the device, like uh, this device has a super powerful GPU, is the MediaTek Dimensity 8200 Ultra and it's not one of the best but from the mid-range it's one of the better ones and of course I can compare it to the Snapdragon but uh, this, this CPU has some really remarkable scores and I'll show you right away. Also, the battery is uh, lasting more or less like any normal Xiaomi or Poco phone would at 5000mAh. It also comes with a 67W charging, which is plenty. This phone is gonna charge for around 30 minutes or so. And the Pro version comes with 120W, which is probably a lot better. But I assume that most people wouldn't uh, even want more than 67W. Uh, I know that the bigger numbers usually attract more people, but in this case, it could damage the battery and reduce its uh, longevity, so uh, there is something that you should keep in mind. Now just because you're getting the slower CPU, unlike the Pro version with the Dimensity 9200, doesn't mean that your gaming experience is going to be bad, no, quite the opposite actually. I've tested a few games here and especially with a game center that can boost a little bit your FPS, everything runs super smoothly, 60 frames even more per second depending on the game that you choose. And the only way that I'm gonna have a bad gaming experience on this device is uh, because I suck at the games themselves. Now I should mention that this phone can heat up quite a bit after playing for a few hours, uh, especially on more demanding titles like Genshin Impact, but it's nothing to worry about in my opinion. Oh, and let's not forget about the voice changing feature that the Game Center has. And with this voice I can finally scare any 12 year old in any game. 
Now probably one of the most exciting things about this phone is its camera system and uh, its collaboration with Leica. So we have a triple camera system here, the 50 megapixel main shooter, the 50 megapixel telephoto lens, 12 megapixel ultra wide camera and when we go to the front we have a 20 megapixel front facing camera as well. So here are some samples that I took over the past 2-3 weeks uh, with this phone and I'm super pleasantly surprised of the quality of this camera, especially at this uh, price point, I think it beats uh, quite a few of its competitors. Now this camera has two modes, one is the Leica Vibrant and the other one is the Leica Authentic. Now these two modes uh, produce slightly different results and I believe that one of them makes the images slightly more warm and a little bit more yellowish and that's why I don't prefer the vibrant mode, I actually prefer the authentic more. But as always let me know what you guys think down in the comments, I would really love to hear your opinions on this camera set and I should mention that this camera also does great portrait shots and even in low, low light conditions it still manages to capture most of the details and you're left with a really pleasant image most of the times. Now that is definitely not the case when it comes to low light conditions and night time. The camera oftentimes struggles quite a lot to produce any good looking image and there is a lot of grain and noise as you would expect from a phone of this uh, price range. But I still think that the results are quite usable especially if you turn on the night mode that makes the images quite a lot brighter and better, you just have to keep the phone a little bit more steady, but overall I'm satisfied with the results even during the night which is quite impressive. Now moving on to the video quality, we have HDR10 plus support for the video here and I'm shooting at 4K 30fps but it might not be the cup of coffee for everyone, especially because it uh, overexposes sometimes and oversaturates. But uh, if uh, that's not for you then you can definitely just use the regular mode and uh, you're gonna be quite surprised by the, the quality and the stabilization that this uh, phone offers. Uh, there's absolutely zero complaints here from my side but as always I would love to hear your opinions. I would also really love if you poke that little like button there down below especially if you find any sort of value in this video and thank you so much. Now my own personal opinion about uh, the Xiaomi 13T is that it's definitely a lot more worth it than the 13T Pro mainly because uh, the only difference is the slightly faster CPU on the, the, on the Pro version and also the ability to record 4K 60fps and 8K 24 which honestly nobody is going to use. But uh, anyway I think that for around $200 you should definitely save yourself the money and just go with the regular 13T. It's honestly a great experience, you, you definitely won't regret it. So there you have it guys, the Xiaomi 13T. Now I really love this phone, it's been my daily driver for like two weeks, even more and I, I can say only good things about this phone, really there's absolutely no negatives. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments, I would really want to, to know uh, your opinion on this device and thank you so much for sticking until the end of this video. This means so much to me. My channel has been growing a little bit uh, for the past uh, few months and I'm really grateful to all of you who support me and enjoy my content. Anyway, talk to you in the next one. Bye bye!